taking a look at day two of tent enforcement happening in downtown. San Diego just made another best of lists and it may surprise you which one. Embolden sex workers. We'll talk about the unintended consequences of Governor Newsom's new bill. 18 street lights don't work on this one street. So we asked the city, when will they fix it? And the Verify team answers more of your questions about student loan forgiveness. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. Today is day two of the city's efforts to clear streets of tents used by people who are homeless. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carla Chiquetto. I'm Marcella Lee. The mayor's office started enforcing the policy again on Tuesday, requiring people to take down their tents during daylight hours. CBS 8's Rocio de la Fe shows us if the tents are being packed up during the day. Walking the streets of downtown, we have seen plenty of tents that remain standing, but we also have seen police officers going around and clearing the sidewalks of what they can. These sidewalks filled with tents are where unsheltered people call home, but the city of San Diego is trying to get the individuals in them to take them down during the day. Everything that was there had value to me and they throw away everything in the trash. Guadalupe Rodriguez says he was upset to find out city crews had taken everything and calls what's happening unfair. Everybody is against us, you know, the city, the people, everybody's against us and we are needy because a lot of people here have mental problems and they cannot take care of themselves. Right now, the efforts to clear the streets are focused in downtown. Enforcement began Tuesday. Today, police officers assisted crews as they picked up belongings and cleared the sidewalks. But there are plenty of tents that still stand. The city tells me change won't happen overnight. In a statement, the city says, quote, the public should not expect a dramatic shift in just a few days. SCPD has dedicated its neighborhood policing division to this effort and patrol will support as possible when not responding to other calls. But the number of encampments and the time it takes to address each one will affect daily progress. People need a place to live. Mitch Tastrom works at Mission Brewery downtown and says it's good that the city is trying to enforce a policy because of the impact the homeless crisis has had on businesses in the area. There's not a lot of foot traffic around here and I think that's a big product of the homeless encampments that, that are here. Um, they need a place to live so it's nothing on them but um, it's definitely not good for business, not good for taproom sales and just not good for our community at all. But Tastrum says he doesn't expect much to change. Enforcement's a good thing, but I really honestly what we should be spending our money on is mental health awareness, to be quite honest, because that's really what these people need. We have no place to go. Despite the initiative to clear the streets, the city says individuals will be allowed to put up tents at night because there aren't enough shelter beds available. Rocio de la Fe, CBS 8. Thanks, Rocio. The San Diego police are investigating a morning shooting that left one person dead in Mira Mesa. Police say the call came at around 930 from Deering Street. Officers found an 18 year old Hispanic man down in the street in front of his home. They say he was shot at least once. He died at the scene. His name hasn't been released and police haven't said what led up to the shooting or anything about a suspect. National City's mayor says a bill designed to stop police from giving tickets for loitering is now having serious unintended consequences. Senate Bill 357 was passed in September. It decriminalizes loitering with the intent to sell sex. CBS 8's Kirsten Holmes has more tonight from National City. I'm here at National City Hall where Mayor Sotelo Solis and other leaders I talked to say that stopping police from writing tickets for loitering is emboldening sex workers. But even driving home myself, when I see, you know, a scantily clad, literally pasties in a thong um, woman out there, I can only imagine that, you know, what that person is feeling. National City Mayor Alejandro Sotelo Solis says SB 357, the bill that repealed anti loitering laws in California, will not officially go into effect next year, but because it's already signed, the you know the law enforcement is already hands tied but it's also the boldness in the summertime of these human trafficked and you know the the johns they're taking advantage of it from 10 in the morning till the lunchtime hour to right when work gets out and it's frustrating it's not so much hey we can't do anything it's well what are we supposed to do 
And so people are getting more bold. The track everyone knows is Roosevelt Avenue all the way over to Maine, um, over there, and that's what they do. Uh, you have the Navy base, you have all the semis parked on Roosevelt. We talked to businesses and people who live in National City, and while they didn't want to speak on camera, everyone we spoke with says prostitution is a problem in the area. One business owner says he even leaves pamphlets, hand sanitizer, and masks out to try and help encourage the workers to pursue other paths. Peter Cravillo's family has run Napoleon's Pizza in National City for five generations. The biggest problem that I see is tying the police officers' hands of what they can do. Just not prostitution, it's drugs, it's everything else that goes with it. So I'm sick of seeing it. Peter says this could really disrupt the economic growth that National City is finally seeing. You could put as much paint on the building as you want, but if you're not changing what's going out on the street, then new businesses are not coming in. Mayor Sotelo Solis says that she has sent a letter to Governor Newsom asking him to either repeal or amend SB 357. She says right now she's the only mayor that she knows of that sent this letter, but she knows that this is a problem that's affecting the entire county and the state of California. Reporting for CBS 8, I'm Kirsten Holmes. Thanks, Kirsten. Our economy is already struggling, and another big setback when it comes to gas prices could be on the way. OPEC says it's slashing oil production by 2 million barrels per day, despite pressure from the U.S. The move is to help boost sagging oil prices, and it will be the biggest cut since the start of the pandemic. The cuts are expected to start next month. Experts fear this could lead to a dramatic spike in oil prices. Here in San Diego County, gas prices are up again. The average for a gallon of regular unleaded went up a penny overnight to $6.43. That's 39 cents a gallon higher than the 604 average we were paying a week ago. The national average tonight is $3.83. Meantime, millions of Californians will start seeing money hit their bank accounts this week. You may be among them if you qualify for the middle class tax rebate. A family could see up to just over $1,000. This is not the gas rebate Governor Newsom originally called for, but it's going to certain taxpayers to help offset inflation. It took a lot of negotiating between the legislature and the governor's office to get to this point. Our political reporter, Morgan Reiner, has more on what you can expect. Governor Newsom first proposed the idea of giving Californians back their money in March. The governor wanted to tie this to vehicle ownership. The majority Democrats in the legislature wanted to tie this to income, and they're the ones who won that negotiation. Political analyst Steve Swat said the negotiations between the legislature and the governor delayed the timeline of the payments. Exactly who would get the rebates and how much would, would they be. And so they finally came to a, a, a reasonable a conclusion, uh, but it was too late to distribute this money in the summer. Depending on your income and your tax filing status, you could get anywhere from $200 to $1,050. You must have filed taxes in California in 2020, and you must still live in California now. There are three, about 3 million Californians who did not file income taxes because they don't make enough money. And to get this rebate, you have to have filed income taxes this year. And many of these 3 million individuals are uh, disabled and certainly very poor. And this has angered many of the, the advocates uh, who, who see this as a slight. For those who e-filed or use direct deposits, you will see that money hit your account between this Friday and the 28th. Those who received stimulus checks but didn't file electronically will get debit cards in the mail between October 25th and December 10th. The rest of the cards should be mailed out by January 15th. For a full breakdown of who qualifies for that rebate and how much they get, we've included a link on our website, cbs8.com. Today is free ride day. Buses, trolleys, the coaster and sprinter are offering free rides to San Diegans all day long. It's to celebrate California's fifth annual Clean Air Day, encouraging people to improve community health by using public transit and other transportation services. We're looking at lots of different types of services. So things called micro transit, smaller buses to really penetrate communities instead of the bigger buses that we use out there today. We're looking at scooters and a lot of different types of services. Taking public transit can also help save you money. You can save on gas, 
avoids special event traffic and parking costs, and it helps reduce air pollution. Still ahead tonight, new details in the hunt for a possible serial killer in Northern California. Plus, is the Get It Done app really getting things done? We're working for you tonight to get answers. Our sunset for tonight will be at 628. This is the view looking out from Mount Woodson. Now we're closing out the day on another near seasonal one, but temperatures are actually going to go below seasonal by next week. I'll let you know when coming up. Federal officials are monitoring for threatening incidents ahead of the midterm elections. I'm Natalie Brand with a look at the states facing a rise in threats to election workers.